Hello everybody and welcome to Rebel Canning for the Poor Man, part two. It's been long enough that I figured everyone needs to see a little bit of an update on uh, how I'm rebel canning as a poor woman. And um, this one is going to be on when you visit the food pantry or food bank, whatever you call it in your area, um, and how to preserve what you get. The economy is going down the toilet, guys. <laughs> People who haven't been to the food bank ever are going for the first time. People who have been to the food bank are showing them the ropes. And um, as someone who grew up using food banks and other resources, I wanted to show you what to expect because you might find yourself in that spot. And it's kind of disillusioning to have to go in and grab something that you've never done before. And you get home with all the stuff and it's stuff you wouldn't normally buy or stuff that's not quite as good as you would normally buy. What do you do with all of that? And often food banks only allow you to come once a month. So that means all of the fresh fruit, which isn't always all that fresh, um, is supposed to last you and your family for quite a while, um, unless you can supplement it some other way. And the fruit's just not always that great. Same with the veggies. They're bruised and they're seconds and things like that. So I'm going to teach you how to make that stretch, how to uh, work with your budget, and use what you've got to make all of those fresh things and even the frozen things last even longer and work better for your family. I'm hoping to make this kind of a short series. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, there might be some just poor man's cooking too, instead of just canning, because before you know it, I feel like there's going to be a lot more of us in that spot because uh, we're in that spot, even though we've prepared quite a bit, even though we have backyard chickens in the garden, we're still in that spot because the economy's just awful. So come on in, tune in, and uh, watch some frugal homesteading. From the food pantry, I got a variety of fruits, some looking better than others, and I uh, went ahead and just picked through and got the ones that were too ugly out. I'm going to start by making some quick strawberry preserves. I use my little grapefruit spoon here and pull the tops off, and then I'm going to put all these into a pot. There's some of the scraps. They'll go to the chickens. And I've got about three pounds of strawberries in here, and I'll be adding two cups of sugar. Then you just boil it down. Now I took all the rest of my fruits and diced them up and mixed them together. There's a lot of pineapple and plums in here. Some grapes, a peach, a pear, and an apple. About the only thing you might not want to put in here fruit-wise is maybe as they get kind of mushy. Pretty much everything else works. I've got some pint jars and I've got my canning funnel. If you don't have one of these, that's okay. Just wipe your rims really well after you're done filling up the jars. And we're gonna load it up to the bottom rim there, about a half inch headspace. And in another video, I explained that I kind of like to take a little utensil, like a spoon or something, and just gently press down to make sure I can fit a little bit more in there because we're canning to preserve and save room in our fridge. We don't want to use too many jars. Going back to the strawberries, I'm just going to stir them up and see where they're at. And they look good. So, I'm going to get a couple of jars. These are jars that were store-bought foods. One's a pickle jar and one's a strawberry jam jar. My funnel fits in the pickle jar, but it's not going to fit into the strawberry jam jar as you will see. So sometimes you just have to be inventive. I'm using the slotted spoon thing to scoop my strawberries into this jar. That'll leave a lot of the syrup behind because we're going to be using that syrup 
for canning our other fruit as well. I also fill these to about half inch head space, but since the bands are shorter, you have to compensate. Don't fill it quite to the end of the bands. Now I'm going to just perch this on here very carefully <laughs> and attempt to fill it this way. Kind of scraping the bottom of the pot here and you'll see there's a little extra room but I went ahead and filled that up with syrup off camera. Now I'm going to make sure to wipe these rims really well especially the one where the funnel did not fit. We want to make sure that you got clean rims and since these are one piece lids I am wiping the sides as well. I'm reusing store-bought jars that are from store-bought foods so their lids are called lug lids. This is a lug lid, and you can see the rubber still looks good. This one does have a button that pops down, and it fits on my little strawberry jam jar. The other lug lid has a little bit of staining, but it's fine, it's in good condition, and it fits on this pickle jar. Now we're going to work on making a syrup to fill the jars of the mixed fruit. This is the strawberry syrup I had left. I'm gonna just measure it out so I can see how much other liquid I need to add to it and how much sugar. I've got about three cups and I'm gonna add the liquid from the other fruits, mostly pineapple juice. Here I'm going to reference my ball blue book to see what kind of a syrup I want. Feel free to screenshot this if you can. I'm going with an extra light syrup. So that means I need to fill this up to the four cup mark and then add almost two more cups to it. And then I estimate that I had about a cup of sugar already in this mix. So I'll be adding a little more than half a cup of sugar to it as well in order to make an extra light syrup. Now your canning time does not change based on how much sugar is in there. So you can really put as much as you want. If you don't want that much sugar, don't add that much. If you want more, add more. No problemo. Now we're just going to give this a stir and heat it up so that we can pour it over our mixed fruit in the jars. Now that it's nice and hot, I'm just using my cup scoop to measure it in here. I don't need quite a cup of liquid in order to fill this all the way to the half inch mark. It's a good way to estimate how much liquid you're going to need. For each pint that's already filled with fruit or whatever else, you're probably only going to need about a cup of liquid. It's pretty sticky, so we're going to be sure to wipe it down with a damp uh, paper towel or cloth. And we're going to fill all of these jars up to that half inch mark. If you find that you ran out of syrup before you get to the last jar, you can add just a little bit of water and it'll be fine. I'm reusing a classical lid, just like I am reusing the lids on the strawberries. And the rest of mine will be reused uh, flat lids with bands. It's time to start loading these beautiful bad boys into the canner. Now, I have an awful lot of these, and I'm thinking I'm probably going to need a second rack. So, 
what I'm going to do is load them up so that they're all about the same size. And then I'm going to see what I'm going to do. So it turns out a second rack was needed. And what I did is I split the last pint into four little quarter pints. And we're going to show you how to double stack this. Just spread them out kind of evenly so that they're not all on one side or something. And then you are going to want to fill that the rest of the way so there's an inch or two of water above that second rack. Turn up the heat. And we're going to get a lid on this puppy and wait for it to boil. After referencing a good canning book, again, Ball Blue Book's a good place to start. Check the amount of time you need. I'm going to need 20 minutes for canning this mixed fruit in syrup. Movie Magic tells us that 20 minutes is done. So we'll turn off the timer and we'll turn off the burner. And then off camera, I lift up the lid because you need two hands to do that and then just wait for it to cool down. Use a jar lifter to pull your jars out of the water bath canner and place them on a cloth so they don't get shocked from the really cold counter. And here we have four little quarter pints of fruit, two pints of strawberries, and eight pints of fruit cocktail that'll last a lot longer than it would in fresh form. Thanks for canning with me today. This is your friendly reminder not to mess with the lids, regardless if they're one piece or two piece, until tomorrow. Give at least 12 hours, if, up, if not up to 24. Um, there's one ceiling right now. I hope the ping came through on the audio there. Um, these will be good on your shelf for years. As long as the seal lasts, they're good. Um, two piece, lids I like to take the bands off so that I can see if it lost the seal one piece lids obviously you don't um, you can kind of see on the one piece if it starts to dome up um, if it loses a seal but I don't have too many that lose their seal um, after I know that they're sealed I've had maybe two in my lifetime <laughs> uh, my lifetime of canning which has been about five years now so that's not bad, not bad at all. And um, yeah, so like I said at the beginning, the economy is not doing so great. And we wanna use everything that we can get wisely. If you find yourself in a food pantry position, don't freak out, it's okay. We've all been there or we will be there or something. And now you have some tools in your belt, how to make those things last and how to make them serve your family better. And um, we'll try and do some other ones on, you know, preserving those big bags of frozen vegetables or whatever else you get. And I'll do some other poor man's cooking. And I hope that you enjoyed this one. If this is the first poor man's rebel canning video you've seen, go back and see the other video first, or now. <laughs> so you can catch up on any uh, techniques that you might have missed um, learning about. That one's a very good intro to canning. And yeah. All right. Now I'm going to go and enjoy listening to my fruit cocktails ping and my strawberry preserves. And I'm glad I got those little jars so that my kids can have single servings or honestly, so I can have single servings when they're not watching. There's another one. God bless you all. And um, stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, you. Over here. You know, she doesn't get paid for any of this. Yeah, I know, right? But, you know, if she makes it to a 1,000 subscribers, she'll get a couple pennies every time someone watches this. Don't tell anyone.